with this second generation NX, Lexus has bought us a strikingly styled premium mid-sized SUV that's unafraid to go its own way when it comes to cars of this kind. It's still one of the only models in the class that can't be ordered in diesel form, offering instead a beautifully refined and highly efficient petrol-electric hybrid powertrain, now available in PHEV plug-in as well as self-charging forms. If you're choosing in this segment, most of the magazines will tell you to buy something German. But if this revitalized NX appeals, you may well feel that you know better. And you could be right. Here we are at the beginning of a fresh chapter for the Lexus brand. That's how the company describes this second generation NX, a car that could hardly be more important for this Japanese maker's future fortunes. This model builds on the sales platform established by its predecessor. A car launched back in 2014 that went on to shift over a million units, helped by a useful update in 2017, the range eventually becoming the Mark's best-selling model, accounting for over a third of all its European sales. Just as importantly, that original NX marked a fresh era for Lexus, as a company confident in its own design direction rather than a premium segment follower. Much then is expected of this second generation model, and much on the face of things at least seems to have been delivered here, with over 95% of the parts being completely new. There's a fresh design language, more involving driving dynamics, a vastly improved cabin and much stronger standards of safety. In true Lexus style, it's still hybrid only, of course, but now for the first time with the brand, there's also the option of a frugal plug-in hybrid powertrain. This one borrowed from the Toyota RAV4. Just as significantly, this Mark II design's all-new GAK platform has enabled it to take a slight step up in size. The old NX wasn't quite big enough to take on key segment rivals like Audi's Q5, the BMW X3, the Mercedes GLC, the Jaguar F-Pace and the Volvo XC60. This second generation version is, but these are tough competitors. Can this rejuvenated NX really compete with them on equal terms? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. So, the Lexus driving signature, what on earth is that? Well, it's what this NX now apparently has in a bid to distinguish this second generation model's driving experience apart from its predecessor, a car that was about as entertaining as a shopping trolley. The point was, though, that few folk who actually acquired one really cared, and we can't help thinking that the same will be true this time round. Still, Let's see what we've got here. It all seems very Lexus-like, and as soon as you're seated, the instrument binnacle screen lights up and an NX side silhouette appears. When the brake pedal is pressed, you hear the hybrid system whirring into life, and switching the vehicle on via the power button activates the center stat monitor and brings a green ready sign on the instrument screen, accompanied by a pronounced beep, which isn't diluted with engine roar, because there isn't any. Whatever NX you choose, there is an engine. You'd have to choose this model's close cousin, the full electric RZ450E, if you didn't want that. But it doesn't cut in on startup as it would with all this car's mild hybrid engine segment rivals, or almost instantly after, as used to be the case with the previous generation NX hybrid. So, could this be your ideal transitory initiation to the world of electrified motoring? Time to find out. As you might already be aware, there are two distinct versions of this Lexus this time round, full hybrid or, as in this case, PHEV. Most will want the more affordable full hybrid self-charging 350H version with a powertrain that you can't plug in but which can run fully electrically, independently of the combustion unit for some of the time, a formula still ignored by all this car's most direct crossover rivals. 
That drive format uses a re-engineered fourth generation hybrid system retaining the previous two and a half litre four cylinder format but offering 24% more power which means 241 bhp beneath your right foot, a good chunk of it from the front axle mounted electric motor. That power hike is actually quite important because the Shiftmatic auto transmission is still of the sort that's reluctant to instantly respond to the urgent stabs of the throttle. These were almost essential in the old car if assertive progress was to be maintained but feel far less necessary in the second generation 350h because the car shifts along that bit quicker. The extent of that quickness depends a little on whether you've chosen the 350h in front driven form in which case 62 miles an hour from rest takes 8.7 seconds or as is more likely you've chosen the E4 all wheel drive version in which case the sprint time is reduced to 7.7 .7 seconds. The all wheel drive version gains its extra acceleration courtesy of the addition of a second electric motor driving the rear axle and producing a further 53 brake horsepower. Either way, the 124 mile an hour top speed applicable to every NX model precludes autobahn burning. Which we're not going to be doing in the alternative 450h plug-in NX model we're trying here either. Though it does offer a useful slug more power, 305 horsepower in total. Not that this makes the plug-in NX that much faster than its 350h stablemate. Rest to 62 miles an hour is only a fraction quicker, taking 6.3 seconds. That's because this 450h plus is carrying around the extra weight of a big 18.1 kilowatt hour battery, which you won't mind because it gives this car an impressively long EV range of up to 47 miles. Unlike with the NX 350h, all-wheel drive is mandatory with the 450h Plus version, which achieves the performance sprint time reading we just quoted only with the assistance of combustion power. If you stay in all-electric drive in an NX 450h Plus, the 0-62 mile an hour sprint figure is 10 seconds on the way to a limited maximum of 83 miles an hour. Yes, in this plug-in NX you can choose your preferred method of power delivery. Well, you can after start-up anyway. The car always pulls away in battery-only EV mode, one of the four different powertrain operational settings available. Pressing this button near the gear stick lets you flip between EV, full electric drive, and the alternative HV mode. The latter being more realistic for normal driving as it runs this Lexus as a regular full hybrid. The software seamlessly blending in either petrol or electric power sources as required. A full press on the same button connects you to a further charge mode which sees the engine note rise as it rather inefficiently charges the battery when you're driving. All that might sound complicated but driving an NX 450h plus really isn't. You don't have to make driving mode choices unless you really want to because an additional auto EV or HV mode button is also provided which essentially makes all the decisions for you. Its choices seem effective too because that advertised 47 mile electric driving range figure turns out to be not beyond the bounds of achievability which has been a bit of a revelation for us having spent the last few years testing PHEVs that regularly undershoot their advertised EV range by 35% or more. And bear in mind that in this segment, with the exception of the Volvo XC60 Recharge, all this NX model's PHEV rivals have EV driving range figures WLTP rated at 10 to 14 miles less. Bottom line, the technology in this plug-in Lexus works, from an efficiency point of view anyway. Where most Toyota Motor Corporation derived hybrid products tend to struggle though is in the way they respond under throttle load, the problem we referenced earlier, which initially is frustrating until you realise that a different driving style is required here. You don't make a hybrid engine go quickly by ramming your right foot to the floor, but by backing off the throttle between ratios in a way that lets the revs drop and the engine bite into its torque curve. Once you understand this, things improve and get better still once you realise that the initially rather 
dead feel you get when pushing on the accelerator can be mitigated by playing with the drive mode select dial you'll find near the drive system setting buttons we just referenced. Eco, normal and sport mode options are offered which tweak steering and throttle feel along with gear change response. With the sport mode activated, which sees the speedometer switch itself into a red tinged glow, the 2.5 litre VVTi engine gathers itself together with a bit more enthusiasm, chipping in with a rather unlexus like urgent thrum. You can't raise your hopes too high in this regard, of course. As usual with full hybrids, mid range torque is pretty terrible, even on this 450H plus variant. Overtakes have to be planned with care because there's much less pulling power than you get from a comparable 2-litre diesel, which is why the 1500 kilo braked towing capacity figure that applies to both versions of this car is substantially less. And on this 450H Plus model, you'll really feel the extra 180 kilos weight of all the PHEV mechanicals in terms of body roll if you start to push on a bit too hard through tighter bends. But hey, Look at what this car can give you, the incredible ability to virtually ignore petrol stations for all but longer journeys, so give it a break. In any case, whichever kind of NX you prefer, full hybrid or PHEV, there's actually now quite a bit to like here once you learn to drive this car the way it was designed to be driven. This second generation model has, as we said earlier, been engineered to deliver what the brand calls its Lexus driving signature. A supposedly ideal combination of comfort and handling dynamics apparently honed by professional racing drivers. And again, you shouldn't get your hopes up too high here. This is still no Alfa Romeo Stelvio, BMW X3 or Jaguar F-Pace. but. The NX now at last matches the dynamic standards set by brands like Mercedes, Volvo and Audi in this segment, which is a real step forward. The reasons why lie with 30% more body rigidity from this Mark II model's newly acquired GAK chassis, plus 20% faster steering responses, a 20mm lower centre of gravity, better weight balance and increased track width at each end. There's also a fresh suspension design, which as before can be had with AVS or Adaptive Variable Suspension Adaptive Damping if you opt for an F-Sport model. We haven't got AVS here and haven't really felt the need for it. The standard setup delivering supple damping that copes reasonably with porous surfaces and school run speed humps, but can sometimes feel a little over firm on nastier potholes and ruts. What else? Well, the re-engineered electronically controlled braking system now delivers significantly more pedal feel. You get shift paddles behind the steering wheel which deliver engine braking force in six steps. And highway cruising speeds are as refined as you'd hope from a hybrid, helped in this 450H Plus model by the fact that there's less noise from the hybrid engine as it can run at lower revs compared to the self-charging 350h variant. Noise and vibration are also suppressed by plenty of insulation in the wing linings and front pillars and the use of acoustic glass for the windscreen and front side windows. We usually finish any review of a mid to larger size SUV with a quick summary of off-road ability. Uh, very quick in most cases. Soft rotors of this sort aren't of course intended for the Serengeti and the modest 185mm ground clearance of this one means you'd be very unwise to venture anywhere too arduous with it. To be fair though, on ground that's fairly even, the electronic E4 system that most will specify on this NX performs reasonably, partly because when necessary it's able to direct more torque to the rear wheels than many mechanical 4x4 systems deliver. That really helps when pulling away on loose, slippery surfaces, at which point the E4 system automatically distributes torque according to the tractional needs at each axle, with a front to rear split that can vary from 100% at the front and zero at the back, to up to 20% front and 80% back, depending on conditions. Equally important is the inclusion, for the first time on a Lexus, of an automatic limited slip differential control called a trail mode and selected via this little tree designated button between the seats. 
it deals with important issues that afflicts some less capable four-wheel drive crossovers, cars that run the risk of getting stranded if a driven wheel loses contact with the ground on very uneven terrain. Should this happen when trail mode is activated, the free rotating wheel will be braked while drive torque is directed to the grounded wheel. At the same time, throttle control and the transmission shift pattern will be adapted to help keep the driver keep the vehicle moving. That's all very reassuring. Should you end up with this Lexus in a slippery car park or on somebody's snowy driveway, but despite its name, you'd be very unwise to put the trail system to the test on really gnarly surfaces or on a steep slope where you'd slither hairily down because this car doesn't get any kind of hill descent control system. None of this will be of much interest to a typical NX customer, so will be keener to be briefed on the fact that this car now gets an even more complete complement of the brand's latest Lexus Safety System Plus camera-driven drive and safety features. The pre-collision autonomous braking setup is one of those that works at night when the majority of accidents happen. Plus, there's an enhanced dynamic radar cruise control system offering an element of semi-autonomous drive assistance for the kind of highway environment where this car feels most at home as both engine and electrification combine for efficient progress. At which point you might be excused a smug smile of satisfaction as you cruise alongside these smoky diesel-powered mid-sized SUVs you could have bought for much the same sort of money. Hybrid tech might have a limited lifespan in all our motoring futures, but right here, right now, especially in this car, it really does seem to make an awful lot of sense. It's probably safe to say that the shape of this second generation NX will have wider appeal than its more individualistic predecessor. Whether that's a good thing, is a matter of debate. The old car really stood out in a sea of crossover conformity. Here, well, not quite so much, though it certainly looks a pricier, slightly larger and more mature proposition. And of course, Lexus likes it, pronouncing this evolution of its original L finesse design language a thing of functional beauty. If you're familiar with the older NX, the main thing you'll notice wherever you look on this car is that it's altogether less angular. The earlier model's lower panel styling, for instance, replaced by this smoother concave shaping. We just touched upon the visual perception of extra size. The increases aren't actually quite as great as they might first appear. 20 millimeters of extra length and five millimeters more height. The larger wheels, of course, contribute to that illusion, 18 to 20 inch rims now featuring, and around the rear arch where there's a really neat little aero spat. You'll note this Mark II model's short overhangs and powerful haunches. The front looks significantly more prestigious. The hallmark Lexus spindle grille now frameless, more upright and more integral to the design. Its intricate mesh pattern made up of three dimensional U-shaped blocks. It's flanked on higher grade variants by these four projector LED headlights, each unit incorporating 11 LED chips with light output controlled by a forward camera. Tick-shaped daytime running lights sit above each headlamp, each fading out when the indicators are used. And further down, L-shaped corner cutouts house small fog lamps. Where this second generation NX looks really different this time round, though, is at the rear, distinguished by smarter L-shaped LED lamp clusters and the signature blade style, full width lighting, as first introduced on the smaller UX, and here emphasizing this Mark II model's 20 millimeter width increase and wider tracks. Plus, on the tailgate, the Lexus emblem has been replaced with spaced Lexus lettering. There's a shark fin antenna, a subtle roof spoiler, slim lower reflectors, and narrow vertical corner slots, which don't seem to serve any useful purpose. As usual though, what's more important is what you can't see. This second generation design's fresh GAK Global Architecture K platform, 
which makes possible the change in size and drive dynamics embodied in this Evolved model's vital X-Tech design concept. That chassis, together with virtually all this car's engineering, is shared with Toyota's SUV in this class, the RAV4, but there'll be virtually no cross-shopping between those two models. This NX is certainly a classier piece of design, and if you like it, you'll think this shape to be worth a long, lingering glance every time you walk away for the night. All this being the case, it would have been particularly disappointing if, on the inside, Lexus had served up something more conventional. Fortunately, they haven't done. Signs of what Lexus calls its Omotenashi hospitality begin as you approach and open the vehicle. The door handles, puddle lamps and daytime running lamps illuminate. And then opening the door lights up the instrument panel. Part of a dash design that now wraps itself around the driver, creating more of an immersive feel. Everything you're surrounded with feels deliberately modern and pretty high-end, all of it evidence of Lexus's growing confidence as a car maker. If the model you've chosen has been fitted out with this huge 14-inch Lexus Link Pro centre screen, that'll rather dominate your first impressions. It flows into a digital instrument binnacle you view through this lovely Takumi crafted three-spoke wheel, now adorned on plusher models with touch-sensitive tracer switches. Surrounding it all, there's lovely stitched leather, soft-touch panels that kiss together, and supportive seats with a special deep-hung construction that sits the upholstery seams deeper into the structure, helping the occupant maintain a better posture. Almost everything's different compared to the previous model, and not all of the changes are for the better. The flimsy, narrow, silver plastic door handle catches are fiddly to use. The shiny fascia surfaces quickly attract smears, dust and hairs, and the NX has lost the lovely analogue clock that was bejeweled in the centre stack of this car's predecessor. There isn't really a centre stack this time round, which means that many of the climate controls have been inhaled by the centre screen with vents crammed in underneath. On the plus side, you do at least get proper chunky dials for temperature control, and you can't deny that there's less of a cluttered feel this time around, mainly because the number of switches has been reduced from 78 to 45, with the remaining ones grouped in defined zones according to their function, activated by smart buttons that properly click and clack. Everything seems to fall more neatly to hand too, with exemplary ergonomics you'll appreciate, without really understanding the detailed thought that's gone into creating them. Endless global data gathering of people's ideal shoulder to fingertip distance, and details like an 84mm length increase for the central armrest, so that it's a more comfortable place to rest your elbow. The gear shift lever, now designed like the one in the Lexus LC sports car, is easier to use too, even though it's now smaller. There's a climate concierge system with S-flow control, which recognises which seats are occupied, directing heating or cooling performance accordingly, taking into account ambient temperature and even the effect of sunlight through the windows. And plusher versions like this one get classy grained door card inlays and an ambient cabin lighting setup with 64 colours, 14 of them predefined to reflect different moods inspired by nature. Some cabin functions trigger a musical sound, the seatbelt reminders and the clearance sonars, for instance, the tone of which was apparently curated by Japanese jazz musician Jiro Yoshida. But as we suggested earlier, it's the screens that dominate this vastly improved era of NX interior design. Depending on trim, there's a choice of two. The 9.8 inch VGA Lexus Link Connect setup used by cheaper variants, or preferably this 14 inch HD Lexus Link Pro monitor, the one we referenced earlier. Both are cloud-based with over the air updates and both respond more quickly than before. This Pro setup, for instance, is 3.6 times faster than the previous generation package. And they're certainly easier to use, listening to the many moans about the fiddly remote touch interface trackpad that used to operate the central monitor. Lexus has dispensed with that here, but unfortunately not replaced it with anything. So operation of this central display 
must be done with either finger jabs towards tiny screen icons or use of the voice control system. It's fortunate then that the latter's been much improved with what Lexus calls dynamic voice recognition, which recognises which seat the command has come from and responds accordingly, for example, opening the nearest window. It's more intuitive too. If you tell it you're hungry, it will bring up a list of nearby restaurants. Whatever you want, just preface your command with, Hey Lexus. What do you want to do? It's not immediately obvious at first glance how to surf around the various functions on this screen until closer inspection reveals that there's no home page, just a slim list of tiny shortcut functions along the monitor's right-hand frame for navigation, music, phone functions and vehicle features, plus a web browser and a settings section. Most of what you'll regularly want to access lies in the vehicle section, which is where you go to view an energy flow monitor, plus, if appropriate to the NX you've chosen, screens which show all-wheel drive activation and allow you to set charging times for this plug-in model. Lexus has at last ditched its old Miracast smartphone mirroring system, which only worked with Android phones, in favour of one which incorporates both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, though unfortunately only the latter can be served with a wireless connection. Enough on that, what about the equally detailed instrument display? Well, for the full effect here, on an affordable model, you'd ideally want to put aside some extra budget to make sure your NX is specified with the Tazuna cockpit package that's standard on top variants like this one. This gets you a sharper set of HD gauges on the 7-inch binnacle screen, which change in colour with drive mode, plus a 10-inch head-up display that's customisable using these touch tracer switches on the steering wheel spokes. The left one for audio features, the right one for driving functions. Initially, the tracer pads seem fiddly to use, but you soon adjust. The pad functions changing not only what you view via the head-up projection, but also what you see on the binnacle screen. Choose between an energy flow monitor, audio settings, navigation arrows, a G-force meter, driving support camera features, a fuel and power consumption meter, and a readout with average speed and elapsed time. The screen isn't big enough to show the full width mapping you'd get from rival models in this class, but the display is neatly presented with its single central dial flanked by crescent-shaped battery charge and fuel readouts. That central gauge switches from being a power meter to a rev counter when you activate the car's sport drive setting. What about practicalities? Seeing out, for instance. Well, the thick windscreen A pillars can sometimes get in the way at junctions and the view at the rear isn't perfect, though the D pillar quarter light windows alleviate some of the blind spot there. And it helps that all round parking sensors are standard across the range, as is a reversing camera upgraded on top models to the excellent 360 degree panoramic view monitor we have here. Takumi spec gets you a digital rear view mirror too. Build quality from the Japanese factory seems pretty faultless and there are various colourful upholstery choices as an alternative to the unrelenting black finish offered by most rivals. As for cabin storage, well there are some neat touches like this wireless charging panel in front of the gear stick which you can retract into the dash with your phone upon it. This opening up a lower cubby with the useful USB-A port most rivals lack, plus a USB-C point. There's a deep box between the seats with silver framed cup holders just in front of it, plus the glove box and the door pockets are of a decent size, and there are ticket slots on the facing side of the sun visors. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, all the doors activate with the brand's latest e-latch electronic release system. With this, the handle's fixed, unlatching instead, activated by a little switch on its inner surface. Lexus claims that this allows the door to be opened with a smooth, simple and near silent motion inspired by the traditional shoji sliding room dividers in Japanese homes. The opening process doesn't seem much different to us, but we do approve of the way that the e-latch system allows installation of a safe exit assist setup, 
that prevents you from opening the door in the face of oncoming pedestrians or traffic. Backseat passenger room hasn't been much enhanced by this second generation model's slight increase in body length, but it's still reasonably competitive against the slightly larger premium rivals that Lexus now wants this Mark II NX to compete with. Audi's Q5, for instance, which feels a fraction smaller than this at the rear. That Q5 seat base sliding function is missing here, but you can recline the seat backs. There's not a great deal of cabin width, but what you do get is embellished by the fact that the NX does without the kind of high center transmission tunnel that features on most of its rivals. So, though the center part of this rear bench isn't very comfortable, it is easier to transport three adults in this car than would normally be the case with models in this segment. Headroom's not bad either, though it can be compromised a little if you opt for a model fitted with a panoramic glass roof. If you haven't specified that, you'll be glad of these rear quarter light windows, which prevent it from being too dark and dismal back here. A sensor armrest features twin cup holders, the seat backs have deep pockets, the doors have proper bottle holders, and you get these two centre vents with twin USB-C ports and a 12 volt socket nearby. There are twin overhead reading lights, coat hooks in the overhead grab handles, and most models get rear heated seats. And as at the front, everything's beautifully put together, especially in this top variant, which features these classy Sumi black wood inlays. We'll finish with a look out back. Now, every NX gets a powered tailgate. Top models also fit it with a kick sensor too. And it no longer operates with arthritic slowness, thanks to a new low speed, high torque, spindle type electric motor, which has halved the operation time to about four seconds. You can set the opening height to a preferred level, say to avoid hitting a low garage ceiling, for instance. Once everything's open, a 545 litre load space is revealed, 70 litres more than the previous generation model, thanks to a cargo area 40 millimetres longer. Impressively, this plug-in version isn't compromised at all in this regard, unlike most of its segment rivals. You'd get 60 litres less if you chose a PHEV Jaguar F-Pace, 90 litres less if you went for a PHEV Audi Q5, and 95 litres less if you decided upon a PHEV BMW X3. Access is over this impractical brushed metal loading sill which will quickly scratch, and there's a cargo-based deck board which divides three ways for different arrangements of the loading area. Beneath it, even in this plug-in model, there's quite a lot of space to store extra stuff you won't want cluttering up the main boot. A compartment big enough for both charging leads, for example. That main area can take up to three golf bags or two large suitcases, 77 and 63 litres in size. And if your luggage happens to be bulky, but you still have to take rear seat passengers, the reclining seat backs can be made a little more vertical, which might be just enough to allow you to get everything in. There's a netted area to the left, pull out bag hooks on both sides, four silver tie down points and two restraining hooks, one either side of the hatch aperture. Disappointingly though, unlike nearly all its rivals, Lexus provides neither a ski hatch or a flexible 40-20-40 rear seat back split. So if you've rear passengers, longer items like skis will have to go on the roof. When you push everything forward, for some reason, the seat's folded capacity is 84 litres less than before and it still isn't quite flat. Still, the 1,436 litre capacity will be sufficient for most owners. Let's get to the pricing of this car. We'll quote you figures as they were from launch in early 2022. Now, as you'd expect from Lexus, there are no conventional engines, no mild hybrids and no diesels on offer. Just a full hybrid 350H powertrain and the more powerful plug-in hybrid 450H Plus version that we're trying here. There's no full electric NX variant, and there doesn't need to be, because the brand's RZ450E 
EV model fills that niche and is very closely related to this car. We mentioned pricing, so let's start with what you'll pay for an NX with the brand's full hybrid 350h powertrain. The sticker figures there start at around the £40,000 mark, which is pretty much what you'd expect for a car in this class. Except that most cars in the mid-sized SUV segment that this Lexus now wants to compete in, amongst Audi Q5s and BMW X3s, have four-wheel drive as standard. The starting figure we just quoted you is for a base-trimmed front-driven model. It's a £1,000 more for a 350h derivative with the brand's E4 four-wheel drive system. Almost nobody's going to be choosing this car in base NX spec, though at the very least you'll be embellishing it with the brand's premium pack at £1,000 more onto which various key extras can be bolted, like NX premium pack models are expected to account for up to 40% of UK sales. On E4 350h variants, there's also a plusher premium plus pack option with base NX trim, with enough luxury kit to satisfy almost anyone. Though by that point, for an NX 300h equipped to that level, you'd be knocking on the door of £50,000. If you're happy going above that price point and stretching up to the two very top variants, then there are various F Sport models priced from £50,000 and top Takumi spec priced from around £55,000. But maybe you'd like a little bit more power and EV driving range from your NX, so if so, you'll prefer the plug-in 450H Plus version of this car that we're trying here for which you'll need to allow another £9,000 in your budget. And think in terms of that outlay, starting from at least around £51,000, because for a 450h+, Plus, you have to have E4 four-wheel drive system, and you can't have the least expensive version of the NX trim package. That means NX 450h+, Plus customers will be choosing between premium pack and premium plus pack versions of NX spec in the 51 to £57,000 bracket, or plusher F-Sport and Takumi variants in the 58 to £61,000 bracket. It's a Takumi 450H Plus model we have here. Have you got all that? Good. Right, let's give you some value perspective on those figures, starting with where this car fits in the Lexus lineup. For an NX 350h, think around £10,000 above the company's smaller, less powerful UX hybrid, which seems about right. By the time, though, that you've stretched up into the upper realms of the NX 450h Plus lineup, with a variant like the one we have here, you'll be getting close to the kind of money you'd pay for base versions of the brand's large sector crossover, the RX, which is a V6 hybrid. The Japanese maker hopes, though, that if you're considering this car, it won't be as an alternative to another Lexus. The company's always used the NX as a key weapon for attracting conquest customers. So how will it stack up on price against segment competitors from other brands? Well, not many customers here will be considering this car as an alternative to a Toyota. But it's worth pointing out that very similar engineering to what's on offer here can be had with a Toyota RAV4. The self-charging full hybrid version of that model costs around £6,000 less than an NX 350h, but isn't quite a perfect engineering match because it offers less power. A RAV4 plug-in, though, has exactly the same all-wheel drive PHEV powertrain as this NX 450h plus and offers it for around £8,000 less. Suzuki's A-Cross is a rebadged version of better equipped RAV4 plug-in variants and costs around £4,000 less than an NX 450h plus. As for options outside the Toyota Corporation, well, there aren't many direct ones if you're looking at an NX 350h. Well, actually, there aren't any if, as Lexus wants, you consider this car as competing only against larger premium badge mid-sized SUVs like BMW's X3, Audi's Q5, the Mercedes GLC, 
Jaguar's F-Pace and Volvo's XC60. All of those cars come only in their most affordable forms with mild hybrid, not proper full hybrid petrol engines. But they're still priced in the same 45 to 60,000 pound bracket as most versions of the NX 350H. You might also be looking at pricier versions of the Range Rover Evoque, but that's a slightly smaller car, which in petrol form, if you don't want a PHEV, offers no electrification whatsoever. And in any case, wouldn't save you much if matched in power and spec against an NX. Before we go on to talk about plug-in hybrids, we should obviously point out that full hybrid technology isn't exclusive to Toyota Motor Group brands in this part of the SUV market. It's just that the cars that use it are slightly different from this one. A spend somewhere in the 30 to 35,000 pound bracket would get you full hybrid versions of models like Honda's HRV, Nissan's Qashqai, Jeep's Compass, Ford's Cougar, Hyundai's Tucson and Kia's Sportage. But those are all mainstream brands and in some cases, slightly smaller cars. It's also worth pointing out that the same money that Lexus is asking here would alternatively get you full hybrid versions of two family SUVs bigger than an NX, the Hyundai Santa Fe and the Kia Sorento. But those are seven seaters and again, there's that badge equity issue. Right, let's switch to this NX450 H Plus plug-in hybrid model, which has a much wider cross-section of established rivals, mainly because the models we mentioned earlier as Lexus's target rivals, BMW's X3, Audi's Q5, the Mercedes GLC, Jaguar's F-Pace and Volvo's XC60 are all now well established in their PHEV forms. The NX 450H Plus costs around the same as plug-in versions of the X3, the Q5 and the GLC. The XC60 and the F-Pace cost a little more in their PHEV forms because they're both a bit more powerful. Again, if you're interested in this NX 450H Plus plug-in and looking at rivals, make sure you're comparing like with like. Nearly every mainstream brand with a mid-sized SUV will offer you a plug-in option these days. But apart from the badge equity issue, those are usually slightly smaller cars. And in some cases, they only come in front-driven form. An all-wheel drive, mid-sized, mainstream branded SUV with plug-in tech and all-wheel drive, for instance, plug-in versions of the Kia Sportage, the Hyundai Tucson and the top Peugeot 3008 hybrid will typically save you around £10,000 over this NX 450H Plus once you take spec into account. Right, enough with rivals. Let's assume you've decided that it is an NX of some sort that you really want. So just how generous has Lexus been with specification this time round? Well, let's take a look at that now and start with what you'd get if you chose the least expensive front-driven NX model without any equipment additions. Well, there'd still be a fair bit included. 18-inch alloy wheels, bi-LED headlights with automatic high beam, LED front fog lights, power folding mirrors, roof rails, a power tailgate, the e-latch electronic door opening system, and a very complete portfolio of Lexus Safety System Plus camera safety kit, which we'll brief you on in a few moments. Inside, with a standard base NX model, you'd get Tahara synthetic leather upholstery, powered steering adjustment, a four setting drive mode select system, dual zone climate control, and heated front seats. Plus, a 9.8 inch Lexus Link Connect center infotainment screen with cloud-based navigation, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, and a 10 speaker DAB premium sound system. Across the range, owners can also use the provided Lexus Link app on their smartphone. The connected services offered with that include locking and unlocking the vehicle, opening the tailgate, operating the steering wheel and seat heaters, and adjusting the climate control to heat or cool the vehicle ahead of setting out on a journey. The car's hazard lights can also 
be remotely illuminated, for example, to help spot the car in a busy car park. These things are in addition to established Lexus Link services such as driving analytics, hybrid coaching and fuel level monitoring. Additional Lexus Link functions available for the NX 450H Plus include monitoring of battery charge level, charge scheduling and a charging timer. So that's covered off the kit list for an unadorned version of this model, but Poverty spec NXs of that kind will of course be very rare indeed. Ideally, you're going to want to add either the premium pack at a thousand pound more over base trim, or with the E4 four wheel drive version, the premium plus pack around 8,000 pounds more. The premium pack might actually be all you need. This gets you rear privacy glass, keyless smart entry, ambient cabin lighting, a heated steering wheel, a wireless charger, eight-way powered front adjustment and two-way power lumbar support on driver's seats, plus a cornering function for the front fog lamps and some extra camera safety features. With the premium pack, the NX450H Plus gains eight-way adjustable powered front seats too. Inside with the Premium Plus pack, you get real leather upholstery, heated and ventilated front seats, a head-up display, panoramic view monitor, ambient cabin lighting with 64 colours, and the Tazuna cockpit package with its touch tracer steering wheel switches. With the 350H model, this pack gives you eight-way adjustable powered front seats, while the 450H Plus variant gains heated rear seats. With both the engines, perhaps the most important Premium Plus pack feature is the bigger Lexus Link Pro 14-inch multimedia centre screen that makes the cabin feel more sophisticated. Across the range with base NX spec, there are various other Premium and Premium Plus pack permutations too complicated to cover here. Perhaps the sweet spot would be to choose the version of the more affordable premium pack that also gives you powered seats and that larger 14 inch Lexus Link Pro central screen. Let's finish our review of standard spec by covering what you get with the two top trim levels as usual with Lexus badged F Sport and Takumi. F Sport spec gets a more distinct driving feel thanks to the addition of adaptive variable suspension and front and rear lateral performance dampers. And there's a more distinct look with F Sport trim thanks to unique 20 inch alloy wheels and dedicated exterior design features including a piano black grille, black roof rails and F Sport badging. The cabin features an F Sport steering wheel, aluminium pedals and sports front seats. Plus, there's that larger 14-inch Lexus Link Pro multimedia center screen, a kick sensor for the tailgate, touch tracer switches on the steering wheel, a humidity sensor and an extra fifth drive mode select setting. That only leaves the top Takumi spec we have here. This flagship trim level has its own 20-inch wheel design, remote and automatic parking functions, a sunroof, a card key, a digital rear view mirror and a thumping Mark Levinson 17 speaker premium surround audio system. If budget isn't an issue and you like the sound of those Takumi features but prefer the sportier look and drive experience of F Sport trim, you can combine the two with an F Sport Takumi pack model. Across the range, as long as you avoid the very base level of trim, a big glass panoramic roof will be offered at extra cost. With top Takumi spec, it's a no-cost option to the ordinary sunroof we've got on this test car. As for options, well, there aren't too many. The two top trim levels don't really need much, and with the lower order NX models, Lexus prefers that customers should instead opt for the two packs we mentioned. Bear in mind that you're almost certainly going to be paying more for your choice of colour. The only two standard ones are solid velvet black or Fuji red. Other than that, you choose from a range of metallic or special metallic shades. We've got special metallic sonic grey here. 
As for the interior, well, there are various no-cost option cabin colour and trim packages, which vary according to model spec. On pricier models, you might also want to pay extra for 20-inch anthracite machined wheels too. Choose an NX with premium pack or premium plus pack spec and two aesthetic packs are available. There's the style pack which gives you silver front and rear skirts and side steps and or there's the design pack which gives you front, side and rear chrome garnishes. All models can also be had with a tow bar. The 450H plus can be had with a special bag for its power cables and across the range you can add illuminated scuff plates and a protection pack, which gives you rubber floor mats, a boot liner, mud guards, and rear bumper protection film. Let's finish, as we always do, with a detailed look at safety. Now, this second generation NX was the first of the brand's models to feature the third generation Lexus Safety System Plus package. Equipping it with a comprehensive array of active safety and driver assistance features. At first glance, it doesn't look a lot different to the package supplied with final versions of the previous generation model, but actually quite a lot's been done here in terms of upgrades and extra features made possible by enhancement of the detection range of the car's millimetre wave radar and camera. Let's start with the autonomous braking setup. Lexus calls it PCS, or its pre-collision system. And with this, capabilities have been extended so that it can now detect motorcycles and pedestrians in the car's path. That setup additionally gains a new function that identifies high collision risks with oncoming traffic or crossing pedestrians and cyclists when making a turn at an intersection. Also now incorporated into PCS is an emergency steering assist function which provides assistance triggered by the driver's use of the wheel to automatically control steering when there's a high risk of a collision, helping to keep the vehicle stable and within its traffic lane. Plus, a neat acceleration suppression function has been added into the setup which helps prevent unintended sharp acceleration when traveling at low speed. These various improvements should, Lexus reckons, enable the PCS system to detect up to 36% more accident risk scenarios than before. We wouldn't doubt it. Apart from autonomous braking, the other thing you can expect on a modern family car is a lane keeping system. This Lexus has two LDA or lane departure alerts to warn you if you're drifting out of lane and lane trace assist to keep you centered in your lane. Both setups have been further refined for this Mark II NX model with LDA made more intuitive so that it can deactivate warning and restraint functions when it's judged that the driver's making a deliberate maneuver to avoid a person or parked vehicle. The system can also now recognize some solid objects such as curbs, guardrails, walls and utility poles, giving more natural lane tracing performance. The Lane Trace Assist, meanwhile, has enhanced recognition performance, giving smoother and less abrupt steering support. For example, when overtaking a vehicle in an adjacent lane or when driving close to a roadside structure, the tracing position is offset from the center of the road to the avoidance side, again, following a driver's natural instinct. The other main camera safety area Lexus has worked on for this second generation NX is its DRCC or Dynamic Radar Cruise Control System, now improved so that it can more quickly recognize and adjust to traffic cutting in front of your NX. Working in conjunction with Lane Trace Assist, it will allow a more natural line through bends and decelerate earlier in accordance with the sharpness of the curve. A new indicator-linked pre-acceleration function automatically accelerates the car up to its target speed to shorten the distance to the vehicle ahead in preparation for a changing lane to overtake. And similarly, the system will slow the NX when the indicator is used 
to move into a lane behind a slower vehicle, giving a more natural feel to the driving assistance. All good. And if, like us, you really hate people undertaking on the highway, well, this car won't do it because it features Lexus's first overtake prevent function, which will automatically reduce cruising speed to avoid undertaking vehicles in the adjacent lane. The system works in conjunction with another standard Lexus Safety System Plus feature, RSA, or Road Sign Assist, which has been expanded to respond to more signs and commands. These now including warning and stop signs. When RSA recognises a change in the speed limit, the system alerts the driver to adjust the car's cruising speed accordingly. What else? Well, you'd hope for a blind spot monitor in a car of this price, the kind of thing that would alert you if you were about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle. Well, provided you avoid the base version of NX trim without any optional packs, your NX will have this. A setup neatly linked into the car's all new safe exit assist feature. That's been made possible by the new e-latch electronic entry and exit system built into the doors. If the blind spot monitor detects traffic approaching from the rear and an attempt is made to open any door, the unlatching will be cancelled until the danger's passed. Lexus believes this innovative system can help prevent 95% of the accidents caused by door opening. The blind spot monitor system also incorporates rear cross traffic alert, which will warn you of approaching traffic when you're reversing out of a space, and if necessary, brake the car to avoid a collision. As for more conventional passive safety kit fitted across the range, well, pretty much everything you'd expect is present and correct.